my name is Heidi Brooke, and um, I'm a mother of two. And last summer, I gave birth to my second daughter, um, Caroline, in July. And she was born happy and healthy. And I had developed a cough just shortly before she was born. Um, a very dry cough, didn't come from a cold or anything, just kind of um, annoying. And um, as she, uh, the week after she was born, it, it got more pronounced and woke my husband up in the middle of the night and he urged me to go to the doctor, but I didn't, I just didn't have time. I had a toddler and a baby and, um, but he urged me enough um, to make me make an appointment. And I went in and they said, you know, they tested my oxygen levels and said that it just looked like my childhood asthma flaring up again. So they sent me home with an inhaler I'd used previously. And shortly after that, my daughter had her two week um, checkup and I told them that she had kind of been coughing, but it was more of like a gagging or choking around her feeds primarily. And, you know, they just said, oh, it sounds like regular baby reflux that, you know, no big deal. And and it, she didn't have any coughing episodes then and it wasn't as bad as it, as it got. And about three days later, we were at my family's house for dinner and she was coughing and turned completely blue and couldn't catch her breath. And my sister-in-law, who works at the Seattle Children's Hospital, um, urged me to take her to the ER straight away. Um, and it was there that they ran tests and found out that she had pertussis. And my first reaction was, where did she get it? And they, they immediately asked if anyone around us had, had a cough. And I said, oh my God, I have, you know, but I went to the doctor, I'm taking care of myself. And they confirmed that it was me. I had pertussis and I had, con I had given it to her. So of course I had a tremendous amount of guilt, but not a lot of time to feel guilty. Um, from there, she, w she went downhill pretty quickly and had to be transferred to the ICU. Um, where she was given help with oxygen and wasn't able to eat through her orally and had a feeding tube and just would cough, have these coughing episodes that I can only describe as choking um, until we just had to wait it out. And um, we, we just really depended on support from our family and um, got you know transferred to the medical floor as she started to show signs of improvement um, and there's nothing really they can do to help your child once once they have it you just wait it out and after after we knew she was in the clear was really when we took a step back and said wow we're really lucky not many infants survive this um, and all in the answer and the solution was really simple it was just to get your adult booster shot for pertussis and um, this it, it, it's 100% preventable. Caroline is just turned one year last month and she's thriving. She's doing great. She's happy. She's content. Um, she has not had any like side effects or you know anything. You would never think that she went through this but we're very fortunate and unfortunately not every parent gets to have a positive outcome to their story. No, I actually thought the pertussis and whooping cough were like a million years ago. Like my grandparents got it and, you know, people got vaccinated and I was vaccinated as a child. So I just assumed that I was protected. And it wasn't until this happened that I found out that, you know, since 2005, the pertussis booster was included in your tetanus shot and I hadn't received one since then and um, so it was an easy solution moving forward was to just get it and tell everyone that was going to be you know in any general vicinity of a small infant to get their booster shots and protect those babies that are not able to get their vaccinations yet. Just coughing for it's kind of known as the 100 day cough and she coughed for well beyond 100 days she was ill for, well, we were at Children's Hospital for a month. So, um, but when we left, she still had that classic cough, um, but her oxygen levels and, and saturation of her oxygen were staying at where they need to, her heart rate was not plummeting like it was before during these episodes. So we were safe to go home and care for her there. Yeah, it was, she slept right by me for a really, for a while because um, you just, that, uh, you know, that sound, that cough is just like, you just, you don't forget it.
it makes me very emotional because that in in the video it's it's so mild compared to what babies in the hospital actually um, have and just knowing having had whooping cough and when it got really bad for me just how much it hurts to cough and like your ribs and it I only can imagine what it is for a young baby. I just didn't know enough about whooping cough to know that I should be looking for a cough. You know, newborns, like, they snort and they cough and, you know, they're getting everything out of their lungs that they, you know, they've been inside for so long that it's very common when you leave the hospital for the nurses and doctors to tell you they're going to sneeze a lot and they're, you know, kind of cough and spit up and all of those things. So being my second child, I was like, ah, oh, she's fine until of course she turns blue. And that's when it was like immediate, like that means no oxygen. That means she needs help and assistance straight away. Um, but it, her cough didn't become that, that typical whoop until she was in the hospital. Earlier well, than whooping than cough is it. not, it's not, I asked the neonatologist at Children's Hospital if, if, um, if I would have come in earlier, sorry, if I would have come in earlier, if it would have made any difference, and they said really no. And even when they gave her the antibiotic treatment, really they said it's not gonna do anything for her. It's it's really like a weighted out. They have a lot of like, you peak when you have pertussis and then you just stay at this plateau. And that plateau is why they call it the 100 day cough because sometimes you just get really bad and then you cough for 100 days. And I, I mean, I coughed for over 100 days also. And it's it's this, the same intensity, but obviously for a baby it's, I mean, you get better, but it's still that classic noise. If, if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be that I keep my daughter inside, but I would, because it's impossible. However, I would make sure that any person who is going to be in contact with my child, visiting me at the hospital, coming to my house, taking care of my child, babysitting for my child, everyone gets the Tdap booster so that, you know, before that first vaccination and even the, over the first few that babies get, that my children are protected. Um, and it's easy. It's preventable. You know, it's kind of a no-brainer.